In this video, I'm going to show how to process the first Spectrum image that was posted to the new AAVSO Spectrum database. Let's open that image first. There it is. Bring it into the RSpec software. You can see we don't have much visible data there. Now we can just drag our sampling box through the data and we can see, well, we've, we do have something going on there. But uh, in order to actually see it, of course, let's do a little bit of level stretches here. Now this is a, a resizable box and uh, the default setting in the software is that this is checked. Uh, on larger images, uh, you may wish to uncheck that. Uh, watch what happens when it's checked and I drag. You can see that uh, it's a little sluggish as the software catches up to where my mouse is. But if we turn that off, then the software won't update till I position this. This isn't critical. Again, this is just for us to find our data. You can see there it is. So that's good. Now, this screen, uh, this little window needs to remain visible in order for that to be applied. And as you can see, it's only being applied to the region between the lines. Now, a couple of quick setup issues here. First of all, on the advanced tab here, we're set for 32-bit processing, which you should do for scientific data. If you're processing, say, videos or uh, not really digging that deep for fine data, you can go down to 8-bit by removing that checkbox, and the software runs a little bit more quickly. And also, in order to be congruent with certain astronomical software that flips images vertically when it presents it on the screen, we have this checkbox. By checking that box, for example, what that does is just flips the image vertically. So, for example, those two stars would appear down here. That's really just for the sake of comparing it to images in other software. So now we can see that this isn't quite horizontal because the grading wasn't screwed on horizontally. In the long run, we do want to get that right in our hardware, but uh, at the risk of introducing some minor artifacts, we can use the rotate command here. Now it also, too, uh, has live update turned off so that things uh, run a little bit more quickly on a large image like this. So uh, we're going to be rotating clockwise, and it looks like we have to go almost all the way around to 360. So we'll just drag this down almost to 360. Let's just stop there and see how that looks. That looks pretty good, but let's zoom in and look a little bit more closely. Look at this over here so we can get to it. And uh, this in our zoom window, which again, I was moving fast, is that button right there. I can now zoom in and see that I'm not quite horizontal. In fact, let's bring this line, this data line for our capture box down a little more closely. We can see that they're not parallel. So uh, now what we can do is do minor adjustments. Now, uh, the software that uh, some of the more recent software in the field, uh, you'll find that um, this button changes the angle by five one hundredths of a degree, which is a little bit uh, too small. So we've added this little checkbox. So now each time I click here, it's uh, half a degree. You can see it change on the right there in the image as I do that. Uh, if, if you don't have that checkbox, but the more recent software, then you'll need to match this button uh, a whole bunch more times or have a, a little bit more steady at hand when it comes to uh, dragging the slider. Okay, so I'm going to click and then zoom in with my mouse to get in close. Let's see if my rotate can be improved a little bit. Probably not. So now it's just a process of bracketing in the area that you want to bracket in. Watch the data over here change as I snug up these lines and eliminate a lot of that background sky noise. You can see the spectrum actually coming into view on the graph there. Now how close you make these lines is really dependent on the type of data you're doing. You don't want to sample a lot of background sky noise. On the other hand, you need to make sure you get all the spectrum if your goal is to do flux calibration and scientific data reduction. There's others who can talk about that on the forum who know a lot more about it than I do. But you can see I'm just doing these minor adjustments here. You get as close as you can on the upper left, and then you can use these buttons to snug in additionally. So over here, you can see the profile graph. You, I can zoom in, and as I make adjustments here, that graph actually changes too. That's real time. So the software also shows you the position of the orange capture lines as well as over on the left, the angle in degrees, so that you can reproduce this data at a future time. So let's leave it at that, at that for now. I'm going to close down the zoom window and I'm going to double click here to zoom out. So there's our data. Now the next step is to calibrate. And again, uh, there's been some discussion about calibrating on the forum, but just to emphasize, the uh, strongly recommended procedure is to sample a type A star uh, and use it to calibrate your instrument. 
Uh, and we are fortunate that Robin was able to find a type A star in this field and uh, did the calibration. And when he had finished that, and uh, again, it's a relatively straightforward calibration, because unlike whatever star this is, uh, this star doesn't have easily identifiable features. Uh, but unlike that star, uh, hydrogen bomber lines are very clear on a type A star. So he provided us with the dispersion. So I'm going to go one point here and type in the dispersion of our instrument uh, that he determined. And that is 16.4 angstroms per pixel. So now the only thing we have to do here is identify the zero order. Now, frankly, the first time I tried this, I misidentified the zero order. I tried this peak over here. But then when I did my calibrate, nothing seemed to line up. Turns out that's a background star, and this is the zero order here. So when I click on it, the software transfers down to the calibration wizard the x-axis pixel value. Now, we could zoom in with our mouse for a clearer view. And we could also use even a battery center fit if we wanted to. The key is once we've done that and we click the Apply button, we're now calibrated, as we can see here. Now we actually have the x-axis in angstroms. So now we can zoom in, you know, examining our data as we wish. And at this point, we can actually sample data. Uh, the data could be saved at this point, for example. In fact, let's do that. OK, and we're just going to give this the name calibrated. That way, we can get back to it anytime we want. Now, this is just ex exporting XY coordinates. Uh, and those are uh, easily imported into other software applications. We will be adding the capacity shortly to export uh, to a 1D FITS format, which is becoming more of a standard in the amateur world. So now, before we compare this to other stars in a reference library, there's one more step we can do. This image was shot in Boston, so there's a lot of light pollution. And that's what this level is here. By the way, the software has a pixel map capability so that you can look at your signal levels. But you all are experienced imagers, probably have tools that you do that with, and probably are very good at making sure that you're getting adequate exposures. So but this level here, to subtract that level, we're going to use a simple math tool. This isn't generally the recommended technique. But let's see how we do it. We're going to come down here to the reference. Well, before we do that, I forgot. Let's come up here, zoom in, and just look at the signal level. It's about 6,000 or so. Then we'll come down here and select math on two points. And then from the main profile, we'll subtract that signal level. Once we've done that, we would move it to the main profile, and we'd be done. The recommended way to do this, though, is to subtract some of the background from areas adjacent to our spectrum. And we use the subtract background command to do that. Here we're going to tell the software to take the median or the averages set up on the setup screen from just 10 lines from above. When I click this box, it will subtract the median of that area from our spectrum. Let's see how that works. So now if we zoom in on our profile, we can see that those levels over here, for example, are all down close to zero. And again, that's just because we subtracted the median of that adjacent area. Now, how big your capture area should be and how big your background area should be is a subject for further discussion. In fact, in a future RSpec, we'll allow you to subtract areas that aren't immediately adjacent to the capture area, which can be important in certain situations. Now that we've converted our x-axis from pixels to a calibrated angstrom scale, we can compare our data to friends, colleagues, or professional data like our reference library here. This is the Pickles reference library, and it's got a nice collection of different stars in Obia Fine Girl Kiss Me order. Now, we could click on one star at a time and compare it to our data, or we could take advantage of the fact that Robin's done that already, and he said that this particular type M4 star had a graph that looked much like ours, but you can see it's buried really down low because this is normalized scientific data, so the numbers are close to 1, whereas, of course, our data has very high ADUs. So to scale this axis, this y-axis, so that we can see this low-level data here, we can use a scaling capability, and that's under this button here. You can see the scale box shows up, and now we can just drag that scaler, and it will drag that data into view. You can see it corresponds nicely to our data. Now remember, this color here, this blue, is the reference data from the Pickles library. 
and this red data is our data. So in the scaling feature works nicely. So you can continue to bracket in areas and use that scale to you get the reference curve at about the same intensity level as your data. And now you can see there's a good match on this particular one. So that's the process. You can see that our data very closely matches the professional library. Now our data also continues up, as well as the professional data, further up into the infrared longer wavelengths. But typically with cameras as they lose sensitivity, this area here also is going to be interfered with potentially with the second order spectrum that would be off to the right. So you could use this command here to crop off this region to eliminate that portion of the curve right there. So that ends our walkthrough using RSpec to process the first image spectrum posted on the new AVSO Spectrum Database.